Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I want to let you know about the other podcasts that we do. And today my focus is on the amazing world of radio. Our Patreon supporters did go ahead and cast their vote for what we will do for our summer series. And uh, the summer series that we'll be doing is the summer of Angela Lansbury. A great actress, still alive at 94, and we're going to focus on her radio work. And we'll have an episode of Suspense, a couple episodes of NBC uh, University Theater, and just a wide variety of different uh, programs with Angela Lansbury. And we're going to start bringing you uh, our summer program on May 29th at amazing.greatdetectives.net. You can also check out all of the old uh, programs uh, that we've done previously, our Summer of Bogart, our holiday programs, uh, the Les Miserables with Orson Welles. It's all at amazing.greatdetectives.net. Wide variety of radio programs that we've done available. We also have the Classic Comics Podcast, ClassyComicsGuy.com, The War, TheWar.GreatDetectives.net, and of course, Public Domain Video Theater at VideoTheater.GreatDetectives.net. Well, now we're going to bring you Let George Do It. Uh, We have previously gone through the series and all the episodes that I had available, and we actually have quite a bit more uh, to get through. And uh, there are essentially two groups of episodes here. First, we're going to have some from the early uh, days of the show in 1946, And then we'll have some shows from 1950 to 52, uh, the mostly syndicated uh, uh, programs, uh, versions of Let George Do It that have come into circulation uh, that we'll be getting to in a few weeks. Uh, So we're actually right at the beginning of the show. In fact, we're kind of before the beginning. I started uh, Let George Do It uh, with the audition uh, recording, and that's how I thought of it. It was the audition recording for Let George Do It. But it turns out there were not one, but three different auditions for Let George Do It. And uh, I was going to just bring you one of these alternate auditions. But then it turned out that one of them had a different plot. So we're going to bring you uh, auditions this week and next week and then get into some of the early aired episodes. Uh, It's interesting to note uh, one of the big things with this episode is that uh, Bob Bailey's character is not named George Valentine. He's named George Lincoln. Which, at first blush, it seems like the writer is combining the uh, names of uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Because nothing says private investigations like our two greatest presidents. So here is Let George Do It, audition number one from April of 1946. George Lincoln has been out of uniform only a few weeks. Blessed with an abundance of energy, an adventuresome spirit, and not too much money, he has sunk his last dime in office rent, a few pieces of furniture, and an ad in the classified section of the daily paper. Now, as he sits back in his swivel chair, waiting for the clients to form a line outside his office, the door bursts open. Mr. Lincoln? Yes? Mr. George Lincoln? That's right. I saw your ad in the paper. Do you have a crime that needs solving? Let George do it. Do you have a dog that needs walking? Let George do it. Do you have a wife that needs spanking? Let George do it. What are you, a client? Oh, no, Mr. Lincoln. I'm Sonny Brooks. What do you want, an interview for your grammar school paper? Oh, I graduated from grammar school. Congratulations. Thank you. That's all right. I'll get it. You, hey, wait a minute. Good morning. Let George do it. How do you like that? Well, I can make an appointment for you. Yeah, I'm Mr. Lincoln's confidential assistant. That's nice to know. Well, if you're that close, then come right up, Mr. Winters. Yeah, goodbye, sir. Now, look here, bottom button. You can call me Sonny. Well, now, look here, Sonny. Who hired you? Well, I come with the office. You see, Caleb the elevator man is my friend. He knew I was looking for a job, so he said, Sonny, 
Whoever gets that office gets you, too. Well, isn't that just, Ducky? Oh, you'll find me very reliable, Mr. Lincoln. I have intelligence, initiative, a pleasing personality, and I'm cuff. Cuff? What's that mean? C-U-F. Cool under fire. Oh, that's great. Well, tap two. What's that, sir? Take a powder, punk. Time's up. Yeah, but, Mr. Lincoln... You're too young, Sonny. Things may get a little rough around here. Oh, that's okay, sir. I'm a very rugged character. Now then, Mr. Winters will be here soon. Winters? Yes, sir. Jonathan Winters. He just phoned. Oh. We can discuss my salary later. I'll go on the payroll as of today. Whether I like it or not. Well, I have a feeling you're going to become very fond of me, sir. I grow on people. Yeah, like a bunion. All right, Sonny, call an employment agency and get me a secretary. Well, that won't be necessary, sir. Why? Don't tell me you type, too. No, but my sister does. Your sister? Claire. She'll be here soon to start to work. Say, does your whole family go with this office? Well, I don't have much of a family. There's just Claire and me. Oh, well, that's tough, kid. Well, you like Claire. She's prettier than I am. Oh, that's perfect. It doesn't matter if she can type or take dictation, just so she's prettier than you are. Say, this is my lucky day. Mr. Lincoln? Oh, oh, yes, Mr. Winters. Come right on in. <laughs> Mr. Lincoln, I'm here because... Because... Oh, well, it, it doesn't matter what the job is, Mr. Winters. I'm your man. Just throw your problem in my lap and I'll come up with the right answer. Mr. Lincoln, I'm about to be murdered. Well, now, don't take it too seriously. A lot of us... Murdered? Murdered? You're... <laughs> you're joking, I hope. I'm not joking. Well, uh, uh, well, that's a little out of my line, Mr. Winters. I mean, you see, well, uh... Mr. Lincoln, I... I have been murdered. Oh. Oh. Holy Joe! Oh, well, uh, don't stand there. Do something. Call call somebody. The, the police, the fire department. I'll get a doctor. And Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Lincoln? Don't get excited. Look at me. I'm perfectly calm. Yeah. <clears throat> Going up, miss? Is Mr. Lincoln's office in this building? Uh, fifth floor. Step in. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're, uh, you're Claire, aren't you? Well, how did you know? Family resemblance. You look like Sonny. Nice boy, Sonny, but give him a hamburger and a Coke and he's satisfied. You're not like that, are you? Well... I thought not. Someday I'll cook my specialty for you. Devastating duckling divine a la Caleb. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm sure it oh, must be. Oh, it is. Ever taste chicken broth with nutmeg? Never. You haven't lived. Oh, it's fifth floor. Now, you take Mr. Lincoln. He appreciates good food, all right, but he will put sugar on his tomatoes. I hold to the salt school myself. How about you, miss? Why, I I sir. knew we had a lot in common. First door to your left. Oh, there's Mr. Lincoln now. Caleb. Caleb, get a doctor up here right away. I ear, nose, or stomach. I don't care. Get a doctor. Oh, and I'll get Dr. Mack. He's very fond of my cheese souffle. Uh, Mr. Lincoln? Well? Is anything wrong? Oh, oh no, no, nothing trifling. Now, uh, run along, sweetheart. I if you're a client, come back tomorrow, will you? I'm Claire Brooks, Sonny's sister. Yeah, well, come back tomorrow. Mr. Lincoln? Well? I spent ten cents on bus fare to come here to interview you for a job. I'm going to have that interview whether or not you like it. Well, look, here's a dime. Now, be a good girl and beat it. I see. Certainly will. I wouldn't work for you if you offered me a thousand dollars a week to sit behind a desk and do nothing but powder my nose. You could stand a little powder at that. Oh, you... Now, oh, wait a minute. You had any experience as a secretary? Of course. And your men's socks? Men's socks. Iron shirts, sew buttons, cook breakfast over a can of Sterno? Mr. Lincoln, are you looking for a secretary or a wife? Oh, a secretary. I, I'm still a bachelor. Knock on wood. Had one close call, though, but I got away from her. <laughs> Lucky guy. <laughs> Lucky girl. Okay, you're hired. Thank you. Now give me back my dime. What about salary? Oh, we'll discuss that after I collect from my first client. How do I know you'll ever get a first client? Client? Oh, I've got one now. I don't know what I'm going to do with him, but I've got him. Hmm? Come on in and see for yourself. That gentleman stretched down on the floor is my first... He... The, uh, you, oh. Sonny! Sonny! Yeah, Mr. Lincoln? Well, where is he? Where's the body? Where's Mr. Winters? Holy Joe, Mr. Lincoln. He's gone. Makes sense. Will you, Mr. Winters, couldn't have just disappeared into thin air? It's like I told you, Mr. Lincoln. I went into the waiting room to phone the police, and the next thing I knew, you were out here yelling for me. Look, this window was open. What's the matter? Allergic to fresh air? Well, don't you see? It leads to the fire escape. Uh-huh. And this door leads to a closet, and that door leads to a... 
You will never mind. Will you be serious? Mr. Winters was shot. Brilliant. Maybe his murderer followed him here to your office. Maybe he hid out on the fire escape listening. Then when you left the office, he dragged the body out. I'll bet sis is right. Look, don't bother your pretty little head with puzzles, Claire. Just sit down there and make like a secretary. I'll see you later. But where are you going? To Mr. Winters' home. I've got to find some clues. And when the police come, stall them. The police? Yeah, they'll be here any minute. Sonny phoned them. But, Mr. Lincoln, what'll I tell them? Tell them nothing. You've got charm, haven't you? Well, use it. Mr. Lincoln, I've got to know. What do you think happened to my husband? Now, take it easy, Mrs. Winters. Oh, I was afraid something would happen to him. Why? Well, he was... He was so worried. I thought it was because his writing wasn't going too well. He hadn't been able to write anything in a long time. Oh, your husband is a writer? Yes, a mystery writer. Oh, oh, sure, of course. The case of the body in the bathtub, murder has the hiccups. This is my husband's study. Hmm, quite a layout. Uh, what are all those papers? His manuscript. He was working on The Lost Corpse. The Lost Corpse. <laughs> Cute title. It wasn't coming easy. He knew it had to be good or it'd mean the end of... I... Mr. Lincoln, what are you looking for in that waste paper basket? Now, what do you think? Four-leaf clovers, of course. I want the truth. Was he murdered? Relax, Mrs. Winters. Relax. The best man in town is on the job. Who? Who? Why, me, of course. Is this the lost corpse? Put that manuscript down. Don't look at it. Why not? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just a, a superstition. Jonathan never wanted anyone to read what he was working on. Oh, then of course you haven't read this. No, no, certainly not. Um, did, uh, did your husband have any domestic trouble? Domestic trouble? Jonathan was devoted to me. Was? Why the past tense? What? Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. Mrs. Winters? Yes? Yes, what is it? There's a policeman downstairs. He wants to talk to you. A policeman? I'll be right down. Oh, well, look, Mrs. Winters, you, you haven't seen me, understand? But why? Well, now, look, your husband trusted me. Why don't you try it? Well, all right, Mr. Lincoln. Uh, any way I can get out of here without going down the stairs? Well, that door leads to my husband's private elevator. It takes you down to the back entrance. Say, he thought of everything. Well, he liked to come and go without disturbing the rest of the household. <laughs> Very clever man. Okay, Mrs. Winters, I'll get in touch with you tomorrow. Tomorrow? You mean you'll have news for me? Well, maybe it'll be news to you. And then again, Mrs. Winters, maybe it won't. Mr. Lincoln, what's the idea of dragging me out here in the middle of the night? Keep your pretty little mouth shut, will you, Claire? What is this place, anyway? The back entrance to the Winters' home. Well, haven't they got a front entrance? Sure, but we're not using it. We're here to steal something. Steal? I'm supposed to be a secretary, not a second-story man. Keep quiet. Mr. Lincoln, I quit. Some other time. Now step into that elevator. An elevator? Where will this thing take us? Up to Mr. Winters' workroom. It's pitch black in here. I don't feel safe. I'm here. That's what I mean. Oh! What's the matter? You don't have to hold my hand. I'm not holding your hand. Well, someone is. Well, don't scream. I got him covered. Hey! Get that gun out of my ribs. Sonny! Sonny, I told you to go home. I have a feeling you're going to be very glad I'm along, Mr. Lincoln. You might need me. Yeah, like I need a second head. You could use it. Now, you two stay right here. I know where the desk is. What do you want in there? Well, I've got to get the lost corpse. Lost corpse? You mean you think Mr. Winter's body's in there? No, 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 no. The manuscript of his book. Now, keep quiet. Don't make a sound. Oh! Mr. Lincoln, what was that? Oh, just an old shin of mine. Hey, I hear somebody coming up the stairs. Okay, kids, we can beat it now. I found the lost corpse. Is it a good story, Mr. Lincoln? Mm-hmm. Well, aren't you going to let us read it? Mrs. Winters wouldn't approve. Oh? What's she like? Is she attractive? Hubba hubba. Oh. She has the most beautiful, the biggest blue eyes. Never mind, Mrs. Winters. What about the lost corpse? Well, it's a very unusual story. About a man and his wife. How original. <laughs> the wife would like to give him the gate, but she hasn't any money of her own. Mm. However, she stands to collect a lot if her husband ever kicks the bucket. Is there a murder? Natch. The husband is shot, but he manages to make his way to a private investigator's office. Huh? Is that in the story? Sure. Yeah, but that's what Mr. Winters did. The husband tells the investigator he's about to be murdered. Hey, that's what Mr. Winters told you. Then he collapses. When the investigator steps out of his office, the wounded man disappears. Just like Mr. Winters did. That's what actually happened. It is? Well, what do you know about that? Well, go on, Mr. Lincoln. Then what? Well, later the guy returns to his wife. He says, 
You thought you killed me, but I'm not dead yet. You, you... Yes, go on. Well, that's all. That's as far as Mr. Winters got with his story. No wonder Mrs. Winters didn't want you to read it. It's a story of their life. It shows she's guilty. She killed her husband. Mr. Lincoln. Hey, Mr. Lincoln. Yeah, Caleb, what do you want? Oh, uh, where's Mrs. Winters? Is she all right now? Mrs. Winters, what are you talking I about? I left her in your waiting room. She came to see you. When was this? A few minutes ago. She acted kind of funny, like maybe she was sick. But I was cooking a mackerel on my hot plate downstairs, and you know you got to keep your eye on a mackerel. Never mind the mackerel. Where is she now? Well, I'll just come up and see if she's all right. Do you want me to stuff the mackerel with cornbread? Caleb, are you sure you left Mrs. Winters here in my writing room? You know, some people like rice stuffing, but I prefer corn myself. Mr. Lincoln, look, on the table. A woman's purse. With initials on it. M.W. Marsha Winters. Do you think the same thing happened to her, Mr. Lincoln? Someone followed her here and hid on the fire escape? No. No, she heard us talking. She knew we thought she was guilty. Oh, of course. Say, how are you two at playing games? Games? At a time like this? Look, Sonny, you be Sonny. I'll be George Lincoln. And Claire, you be Mr. Winters. Oh, what about me? What'll I do, Mr. Lincoln? You go stuff your mackerel. All right, Mr. Lincoln. I'll just go do that. Now, Claire, step outside the office. Give us a few minutes. Then come in and say you expect to be murdered. Oh, I get it. You want to reenact the crime. Smart boy. Okay, Claire, get going. First, I'm a second story man, and now I'm an actress. I quit. Oh, go on, Claire. Be a good sport. Humor me. I said I quit. We haven't got time now. You can quit tomorrow. Oh, very well. But you can think of the silliest thing. (laughs) Now what'll we do, Mr. Lincoln? Just exactly what we did when Mr. Winters first stepped into this office. Okay, Claire, come on in. I don't think she heard you. No. (laughs) All right, Claire, we're ready. What's the matter with her? I'll get her. Claire, you can come in now. Claire! Where is she? Holy Joe, this is quite a problem. Now my sister's disappeared. Well, Lincoln doesn't seem to have gotten very far in his solution of this case. First, a murdered man disappeared from right under his nose. Then the murdered man's wife mysteriously departed. And now his secretary has vanished into thin air. Are you just going to sit here in your office, Mr. Lincoln? Aren't you going to do anything? She's my sister. She's the only sister I've got. Now, take it easy, Sonny. Nothing happened to Claire. Well, then where is she? Well, she couldn't take it, that's all, so she quit. Left us flat. Well, that doesn't sound like Claire. Hey, Mr. Lincoln, the macker looks good enough to eat brown and crisp. Oh, by the way, police car just stopped in front. Huh? Holy Joe, the police. How does buttered radishes with the mackerel strike you? Yeah, look, Caleb, get down there and stall the police. Oh, I intend to. And we can top it off with cherry flambeau. Come on, Sonny, we'll leave by the fire escape. Oh, and Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Lincoln? Bring Mrs. Winter's purse along with you. Yeah, that's the trouble with women. As soon as the going gets a little tough, they walk out on you. Excuse me, Mr. Lincoln, but aren't you in kind of a jam with the police? You're right, Sonny, she is. She is, sir? Much prettier than you are. Mr. Lincoln, we can't just drive around all night. We've got to find out who murdered Mr. Winters and what they did with his body and where Mrs. Winters disappeared to and what happened to Claire. Isn't that right, sir? And she's very intelligent. That is, for a woman. Mr. Lincoln. Okay, Sonny. Look at the address on that letter. What letter, sir? The, The one in Mrs. Winters' purse. Is there a letter in here? Well, didn't you notice it when Claire opened the purse? No, sir. Oh, here it is. It's addressed to Mrs. Marcia Winters, 300 Pepper Tree Lane, Cedarhurst. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, that's in the country. Yeah, they must have a country home, too. Cedarhurst. That's out on Highway 6, right near... Hey, we're on Highway 6. (laughs) We're headed towards Cedarhurst now. Oh, brilliant deduction, Sonny. I'll increase your ration of bubble gum. Yeah, uh, I filled her up, sir. Oil, water? No, thanks. Uh, uh, wash your windshield? Oh, uh, don't bother. I washed it once and I couldn't do a thing with it. Huh? Uh, uh, don't get many customers around here at night. A uh, pretty deserted room. Uh-huh. I'll, uh, I'll bet we're the first car you've seen this evening. That's right. Oh, uh, except that there cab. Cab? With a woman in it? Uh, now, how'd you guess? Hey, I'll bet it was Mrs. Winters. Hang on, Sonny. We're getting warm. Is this it, Mr. Lincoln? Be careful. Don't make any noise. There's a light inside the cabin. Yeah, and a woman. See her moving around? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can make out her shadow now. Yeah, very shapely shadow. You gonna just walk right in? Oh, no, no, of course not. That's no fun. What would they do in a mystery show? 
They climb in the window. <laughs> then we'll climb in a window. Mr. Lincoln, she turned off the light. Shall I go in first? Stand back, son. This is a man's job. I'll grab her. Yes, sir. Oh, oh no, you don't. You'll stay right here. Let me go. Turn the light on, Sonny. Yes, sir. Let's see what we bagged. Oh. Claire! Well, 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 if it isn't second story, Clarissa. You have to be so rough. I'll bet you cracked two ribs. Sorry, I don't know my own strength. Well, now that you see who I am, you don't have to keep on holding me. Yeah, but it's fun. Claire, what are you doing here? Well, she saw the address on the letter, so she decided to follow the clue. Well, but why didn't she let us in on it? She thought I was a dope, Sonny, so she took over. You know all the answers, don't you? Not quite. What happened when you got here? Nothing. Place looked deserted. I crawled in the window, too. No one here? I couldn't see anyone, but, well, I've had the strangest feeling. Yeah? As though someone's been watching. Well, stay here with Sonny. I'll look around. Holy Joseph, you sure had me scared. Oh, I'm sorry, Sonny, but Mr. Lincoln didn't seem to be making any effort to solve the case. Oh, don't kid yourself. He just keeps things to himself. Well, uh, everything seems to be in order. Hey, hey, that was a car. Look, Sonny, Claire, stand back there in the corner. I'll cover the door. Be careful, Mr. Lincoln. Do I detect concern in your voice? Well, good evening, Mrs. Winters. Oh. May I present my two assistants, Claire and Sonny Brooks? How did you know I'd come here? What do you want? Oh, just want to make talk. Mr. Lincoln, you've got to believe me. I'm not like the woman in his story. I love Jonathan. Uh Uh-huh, and you're the girl who never reads his manuscripts until they're finished. Well, I... Oh, go ahead. Turn me over to the police. I don't care what happens anymore. That's as good as a confession, Mr. Lincoln. I'm in no mood for confessions. Blow your nose, Mrs. Winters. We're going to play a little game. Oh, not again. Now, Sonny, you keep an eye on Mrs. Winters. Don't let her leave. Oh, don't worry. I won't try to run away. Look, Claire, you're the wife of the lost corpse. More acting? I quit. Tomorrow. Now then, I'll be the husband of Mr. Winters' story. Here are some lines for you to read, Claire. You came all prepared, didn't you? Now, we'll skip to the part where I walk in wounded and say, uh, you thought you'd kill me, but I'm not dead yet. You think you can follow those lines? I can read, if that's what you mean. All right, all set. Let's go. You thought you'd kill me, but I'm not dead yet. No. No, I didn't shoot you. I swear I didn't. But who'll believe you? The police? All the clues point to you. Do you mean... Yes, my dear. You wanted me out of the way. Well, you got your wish. I shot myself. No, I no. killed myself. But they'll think you're guilty. You'll pay for it. I'll get a doctor. Too late. Too late. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye for just a little while. Then I die. What a performance. I don't get it, Mr. Lincoln. You wrote this ending for his story, is that it? Well, of course. What's a story without an ending? I'll tell you what Mr. Lincoln is getting at. He's trying to prove that my husband shot himself. Shot himself in such a way that it would look as though I murdered him. Why would Jonathan do such a thing? He knew that I loved him. You don't have to put on an act for us, Mrs. Winter. Why don't you turn her over to the police? Now, keep your shirt on, Sonny. Okay, you come in now. You mean the police are here? The police... Well, how did you like my way of ending your story, Mr. Winters? Mr. Winters! Jonathan! He's here? It was very clever, Mr. Lincoln. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, I'm terribly sorry you were worried, darling. I tried to go home and explain, but the police were there. No, I I don't understand. Well, you see, the ending to the lost corpse was driving me crazy. You see, I knew that when I searched his waste paper basket. It was full of rejected endings. Finally, I decided to do just what the hero in my book did. Then, when he saw the police were questioning you, Mrs. Winters, he came out here to hide. I saw him in the closet, but I wanted to put on a show for him. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, forgive me, darling. (laughs) Well, come on, kids. They don't need an audience. Wait a minute, Mr. Lincoln. I've got the ending to my story, thanks to you. And with all that publicity in the papers, it's sure to have a big sale. So, name your fee. Oh, well, I I don't know, Mr. Winters. I I haven't really thought about it. Uh, Suppose we say an even grand. I'll send you a check in the morning. Oh, no hurry, no hurry. But uh, I just happen to have a pen and a blank check with me. (laughs) <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's all made out. Just needs your signature, Mr. Winters. Huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> I see. Uh, Holy Joe, a thousand bucks. There you are. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks. Well, uh, let's go, kids. Good night, Mr. Winters, and uh, if you ever get stuck again... I'll remember. Good night. Good night. Oh, what a day. Now I feel like collapsing. Sonny, come here and put your arm around me. Oh, sure, sis. Go away, Sonny. <laughs> Let George do it. Next week at this time, George Lincoln has a difficult problem thrust upon him. You'll probably hear him saying something like this. All that money just to find you a wife, Mr. Peterson? Why, it's a cinch. Now, just a minute, Mr. Lincoln. I've got to have me a wife who loved my little Annabelle. 
Annabelle. Yeah, and all her little brothers and sisters. All her brothers and sisters? How many have you got? Four hundred. Four hundred children? No, four hundred pigs. Welcome back. Not a horrible mystery, though it was a little bit predictable. Though it does kind of work as a proof of concept. As a comedy, it was a bit hit or miss. Though I will admit that there were a few points I laughed. Uh, I did think the part at the end was cute when uh, Sonny was offering to uh, comfort Claire. And he said, you know, stand aside, let George do it. That was, uh, that was cute. So we have one more of these auditions, and then we'll get into programs that have sound effects and things of that sort. Uh, before we go, I do want to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much for Judith. Uh, she's been one of our Patreon supporters since March of 2016, and she's currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Judith. And uh, we will be back tomorrow with Rocky Jordan, and next Tuesday we're just going to let George do it. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.